Good afternoon. We will call to order the April 2018 City of Columbia Planning Commission meeting. We'd like to welcome Planning Commission members, staff, and guests. I would ask that everyone turn their cell phones and PDAs to the silent or vibrate mode. The administrator will now proceed with the roll call. Mr. Tupper. Ms. Hartz. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Cohn? Here. Mr. Stigemeyer? Here. And Mr. Frost? Here. We have quorum. Thank you. I'd like to do a brief review of the meeting format. Applicants with requests before the Planning Commission are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include but is not limited to an overview of the project, case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by planning commission or staff regarding requests. Members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns in intervals of two minutes. The administrator has a timer and will make presenters aware of when that time has expired. The Planning Commission reserves the right to amend these procedures on a case-by-case -case basis. And there's a little timer to your left. It'll have a green, yellow, and red light. When the red light's off, time to stop. The consent agenda. The con Planning Commission uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion or vote. Examples of such items include approval of site plans, annexations, and street names. If a member of the Planning Commission or the general public would like to discuss an item on the consent agenda, then that item is removed from the consent agenda and considered during the meeting. The Planning Commission then approves the remaining consent agenda items. The administrator will now read the consent agenda. Your consent agenda this evening consists of the approval of the March 5th, 2018 uh, minutes, as well as um, two annexation comprehensive plan map amendments and zoning map amendments, which would be items number two, um, which is uh, 2716 Shop Road, uh, as well as item number three, uh, 1321 Piney Grove Road. The consent agenda continues with a zoning map amendment um, on item number four for 42.31 acres on Pageant Road. Um, this is to rezone from uh, PUDR to an RS3 uh, zoning classification. The next item on the consent agenda is a minor amendment to a planned unit development. Um, it is item number five. It is 5.76 acres um, bounded by corner, uh, the corner of Wind Lane and Cliff Kinder Road um, and Hay Meadow Lane, and um, that is a uh, large scale um, PUD. And then we also have two, three site plans this evening. Um, those consist of item number six, which is um, 5.76 acres bounded by the corner of Wind Lane, Cliff Kinder Road, and Hay Meadow Lane, which is a request for approval construct a 39-lot single-family residential subdivision. Item number seven, which is uh, about 52 acres at 3600 uh, block of Pageant Road, and this request is to construct a subdivision of 155 um, single-family lots. And then item number eight will wrap up our consent agenda this evening, which is for 30, 334 Harbison Boulevard and it is a uh, request for a site plan approval to reconstruct a convenience store and gasoline service sa sales facility um, on that current on that property. Thank you. Are there any commission members or guests today who wish to have any items on the consent agenda moved to the regular agenda tonight? If not, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> consent agenda is approved.
We will now proceed with the regular agenda. I would also like to ask everyone who comes forward to please state their name clearly before speaking. Give me a second and I'll get there. All right, um, so the first item we have this evening on the regular agenda is a major uh, amendment to a planned unit development district. Um, this major amendment is um, to this POD, um, and the applicant is here uh, this evening to answer any questions, but I do want to point out we have one uh, correction for you this evening. And that is re referencing one of the POD documents in your packet, um, it's actually uh, the last, almost the last page of text right before you see the, uh, the two drawings for this particular item. And it states that the second element of the development will include a plus or minus 6,600 square foot church. Um, and the applicant has indicated it should be about a, a 9,600 square foot church. Um, so I wanted to make that correction for you um, for that, that numerical. Uh, value um, and um, the reason for this amendment is basically the PUD was very specific of what could go on this particular lot and um, the church has acquired it and it's this parcel highlighted on your screen and um, without amendment they wouldn't be able to uh, build the facility that they're looking for. What was staff's recommendation? The recommendation for this one is to uh, recommend um, that you uh, uh, grant grant the approval for the modification. Okay. The document. Is the applicant here? They are. Okay. Would you like to come forward, please? Mary McNeil. <laughs> Our desire is to, um, as stated, to build a building on Kaufman and. Our original um, drawings did not include a space for us to do a food bank um, within our building, as well as um, being able to do some additional class space. Um, and so that's why we're requesting the additional um, 3,000 square foot, up to 9,000. Okay, do any commission members have questions for the applicant? Any questions for staff? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward and talk on this? Okay. If not, I'd like to call for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the major amendment. We have a second. Yeah, I'll revise the, uh, the motion to include up to 9,600 square foot. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Motion's approved. So item number uh, 10 on your uh, agenda this evening uh, is a zoning and map and text amendment. This is for the Seminary Ridge Historic District. Um, it is a request to uh, modify the historic district from a um, architectural conservation district to a uh, protection area district. Um, and Amy uh, 
uh, more with our offices here if you want more detail about that. Um, I also know there's a number of residents here also. Okay. Is the applicant here as well? Or is there an applicant? <clears throat> the applicant was properly Mr. Davis from the City Council okay. on behalf of residents. Do we have any questions for Amy? If I'm reading this correctly, is this to change the heights? No, actually, or, um, the neighborhood was an architectural conservation district as of 2013. Right. And recently, the neighborhood approached staff asking for exploration of that district and other options. And after conversations and meetings with them, they expressed interest in simplifying the district down to a protection area, which removes both review, some review, and more protection from the neighborhood. So it's, it's a slightly less regulated form okay. of a historic district than the architectural conservation district. Okay. All right. But it was driven by the community members that asked this to be reviewed? It was indeed. Got it. Makes sense. Would anyone like to speak on this? Lance Folsom. When we uh, considered this a few years ago, we didn't know what we were getting into. It sounded good. Our meetings had about 10 people or less if we were lucky. As we've seen this implemented, we like the idea of the historic part, but some of the requirements were pretty stringent. A lot of our moderate income neighbors couldn't improve their properties like they wanted to, like energy efficient windows. So when this came up a few months ago, our meetings swelled to 20 or 30 people. And we voted 27 to 3 in our last meeting to go ahead and proceed to try and change it to a protection area to allow our residents to improve their properties a little easier. And we'd appreciate your help in uh, helping us do that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Brand. I'm also a proper property owner in Seminary Ridge, and uh, I'd like to enhance what Lance said, hey, that this is about hopefully people improving their property, becoming a little more energy efficient, making the neighborhood more attractive so that younger people will move in in the future also. But we are interested in retaining the historic significance of the neighborhood by making this change to this so uh i appreciate you giving it a good close look and i thank you for your time thank you is there anyone else who would like to come forward please do yes my name is robert hendricks i'm a homeowner in the district the home belongs to my mother-in-law uh mary taylor and she passed it over to my wife, Jacqueline, and me. And uh, we would like to oppose the objection because there's never been a homeowners association in the district. This is a neighborhood association. There's over 200 homeowners that live in this area that are impacted by changing of this thing, of this thing from a historic district to a to protection district. It's like having an antique car and all of a sudden you say, okay, we're gonna put anything we want on it and that's gonna change the value. What's well, gonna change the value of our homes? Uh, and on information and belief, the applicant doesn't have the right to submit an application unless they have uh, all the homeowners sign off on it in a letter giving them the right to vote for them as a, as a thing. They're not a homeowners association. They are a neighborhood association. So they do not really have the right to speak for 200 homeowners with only 30 people would present. It's also voluntary. There's nothing that's passed through covenant, there's nothing that's passed through deed, and there's nothing that's passed through, uh, uh, you know, when you sell the property. So membership is not a requirement. So like my mother-in-law, she's 93 years old. You know, for the last four years, she's had a bad hip, so she hasn't been able to attend meetings. There's other elderly people that doesn't attend meetings, and there's also other people that have houses that are in the other, you know, that don't live there. 
Now, the, at this meeting, he said there was 27 people that voted. Part of those people were spouses of homeowners, so that divides it. Part of those people were daughter and, and mother, and part of them were renters. So how many people present were really homeowners? And that's my question. The homeowners are not being represented properly by changing this by a few people deciding that they're going to vote for homeowners that are not there. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, before I ask if anyone else wants to speak, Amy, can you clarify the difference between architectural conservation district to ridge protection area? An architectural conservation district is um, an area that has a wealth of original historic structures and original material and features. So that is why there are more regulations around that because there are more resources there that are important to save. A protection area is one where you have more infill, more demolitions have happened over time, and so it's lost some of that integrity, although there is still recognizable patterns of building, forms, and things like that. Maybe not quite so much detail and architectural features still extant. And so protection areas typically have less, uh, fewer regulations attached because there's not as much there to protect any longer. Okay, thank you. Anyone uh, else want to come forward? Yes, sir. My name is Brian Berg, and I've lived in the neighborhood for 16 years. I'd encourage you to go with the change. Um, the median income in the neighborhood is only $25,000, which makes it virtually impossible to maintain the homes at the level required under the current guidelines. Um, I would also like to clarify that this was an effort on behalf of the Neighborhood um, Association. We don't have a homeowners association. So everyone who lives in the neighborhood is allowed to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to come forward? Any questions from the commission to staff? Okay, if not, I'd like to call for a motion, please. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, recommend for approval the um, amendment of the text of the City of Columbia's Code and Ordinance to delete um, 17.681 and modify 17.681 um, to add a Seminary Ridge Architectural Conservation District to Seminary Ridge Protection Area. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Motion passes. <clears throat> Your next item this evening is also a zoning map and tax amendment. Um, it is no item number. Um, Yeah, hold on a minute, though. I have a different one also. Um, um, my intention was to actually have number 11 at night of number 12 and number 12 item number 11 because there's a sequence in a relationship between the two and item 12 you should really address 12 before you address 11 so you want to go if to you would give uh, if somebody would be interested in making a motion to take item number 12 first followed by item number 11 that would be great I think it, the, the two will make more logical sense together that way 
Can we have a motion to move number 12 first before number 11? I make a motion that we move number 12 to number 11. Second? Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> motion is approved to move number 12 to number 11. Right. I mean, to in front of number 11. So item number um, 12. The item before you at the moment, which is item number 12 on the agenda, is a zoning map amendment to rezone parcels from light industrial district M1, heavy industrial M2, um, the design development um, area DD, in a VISTA uh, ID overlay, the uh, design preservation area, which is a DP zoning district, and the mixed use urban district MX2. Uh, uh, to an MX, I'm sorry, to uh, the mixed use urban uh, district MX2, the Innovista design overlay, and the design preservation area DP. Um, the, let me get to that particular set of slides. So the reason for this is, as you noticed in the agenda, the, this, these two particular parcels have a lot of zoning uh, classifications on them. And the request is to actually rezone them so that the parcels um, that are all in one ownership. Um, so there are a number of parcels, uh, particularly you'll see the one that's highlighted on the screen, as well as the one just to the south that's a, kind of an empty lot with trees. That has a different zoning. It's the intent of the owner to uh, have all, both of these properties in the same zoning district so that you don't have all these different lines chopping them all up and um, basically clean up the zoning from that perspective. Um, and so that's the, the, the proposal before you. Um, the applicant is here, um, and we'd be glad to dive deeper if you have any questions. Okay. <clears throat> Would the applicant like to come forward? Mr. Chairman, my name is Bob Fuller. I'm a lawyer in Columbia, and I'm here this afternoon with Ben Arnold, who is the uh, chairman or president of Southern Realty Development Corporation, who is the applicant. And as uh, Mr. Fellows has already suggested to you, this is more a procedural matter to, to consolidate and make consistent zoning on a parcel that is now more than a single parcel by virtue of its size and use, uh, the company has the ability to acquire an additional three acres to adjoin this 8.7 acres. The property that is under consideration for purchase is zoned MX2 and has the overlay district for the Anavista and the design district. Uh, the property that is presently under your consideration is a larger piece. It's 8.72 acres. It has a portion of M1 zoning. It has a portion of M2 zoning. It has presence in three of the additional overlay districts. It will make going forward and developing a cohesive parcel difficult to have the prospect of having to cross zoning district lines within the development parcel when it is being planned out. It's really a property that is being asked to have a, a little facelift in order to make it uh, more realistic to work with as future plans develop. There is not a proposed development plan to be considered today. There's not a use imminent to require it to be rezoned this minute, but it will certainly facilitate the ability to, to realistically and cohesively deal with the entirety of the 11 acres over time as it is appropriate to do that. And uh, as you know, Mr. Arnold's companies have been in the uh, VISTA for a good many years of its, as long as it's been the district, and are uh, very conversant with the requirements that are uh, at present, both presently and to be
consolidate it if it goes to all MX2. We're not asking for variances or special exceptions or any particular treatment on any portion of the property. It's simply to, to have what has already been a parcel of several identifiable lots becoming yet additionally uh, consolidated with uh, consistent zoning throughout the 11 acres. And that's what the proposition here today is. And we ask your help to do that. Any, any questions for the applicant? Any questions for staff? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to come forward on this? If not, I'd like to call for a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, Chairman, that we recommend for approval the request to rezone the parcel from M1, M2, DD, ID, and DP to MX2, ID, and DP. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Motion's approved. <clears throat> now we're going to item number 11. Correct. Item number 11 on your agenda is um, a map and text amendment and its modifications of the InnoVista Design District um, and the guidelines as well as uh, the rezoning of 11 1100 um, Wayne Street. Um, the, probably the easiest to describe this, let me get to the right slides. So, there, in your staff report, there are four, essentially four <coughs> um, amendments summarized, which I'm going to go over. Um, the first proposal within this application is to rezone a portion of 1100 Wayne Street from the MX mixed-use um, urban district, MX2, um, DD, and ID, um, and DP, uh, to a mixed-use MX2, um, ID, and DP district. Item number two. The second subpart of this um, application is to amend the Innovisa design guidelines to reflect proposed changes uh, to the boundaries and the height requirements in the buffer areas um, and for clarification purposes. Um, item number three, or sub point of three of this particular application, is to amend the City of Columbia's official zoning map to extend the boundaries of the ID zoning district and remove the DD um, zoning district from the same area. And the final sub point of this particular a map and text amendment is to amend the City of Columbia's Code of Ordinances um, in the Vista Design District um, to reflect proposed changes to the Innovista Design District guidelines and official map. Um, with the item that came before, uh, the way the Innovista Design District, I think if I can summarize this in just a few words, is that it was very specific on a boundary. And by expanding the boundary, there's a number of items um, that within the documents that uh, become um, more difficult to enforce and um, they create some awkward um, situations. So for instance, um, in the Innovista Design District, it states you know, which streets should uh, parking garages have access to and which streets should parking garages not have access to. Um, so there's a lot of things like that. And so for instance, Gervais Street was not listed, so we needed to add Gervais Street under one of those classifications. So that's just one example. They're all detailed within the staff report, um, but essentially um, that's the sort of the gist of a lot of these changes. The other change is there is a buffer boundary um, that needed to be modified, and with that, I don't know how many of you were on the commission when we did the West Gervais plan, um, but there was a recommendation to do a, a stepped uh, buffer type height uh, recommendation from within the historic district and so uh, we're including that um, within this particular proposal um, so I think there's a map in here um, yeah so for instance on the map that's on your screen which should be on your tablets there is a uh, 55 foot zone that's approximately so many feet back from Gervais then an 80 foot zone and then 
when you get to that Inna Vista district, um, the original boundary there, then it goes up to 150 feet. And Inna Vista itself is an unlimited height district. So this creates that stepping um, situation envisioned from the West Gervais plan on this particular parcel, not district wide, but just for this area. Um, so that's sort of a quick summary of, of all the pieces within this um, document before you. Okay. Do we have any, anybody have questions for staff? Um, I've got com some concerns about these height limitations. Okay. It, this purple area, uh, are you really saying that has a height limitation of 150 feet? That sounds terribly high. Um, that is for that the, location, or any location that close to Gervais Street. Uh, that's about, um, it's approximately one block away, so um, it, it, is, it is a block. You can see Senate Street just off to the side there. So it's very long. It's probably 400 deep and um, I don't know if that's probably a little bit more. So it's probably six to seven feet long, that orange well, area. Um, so it's not unlike um, other areas of the historic district. In fact, there's some other boundaries uh, to the north where you can actually go from the um, height limits that in, are in the historic district all the way to unlimited, um, particularly when you get towards, you know, Assembly Street. So um, 150 is tall, but if you look at the perimeter of that district, this and, does and, keep that height down lower. In the context of what is surrounding this area, I think it's too tall. I, I think it, uh, 50, 150 foot tall building would be out of place it's, here. It's not much, I believe, did we not measure the Adler building? And the the uh, hotel uh, up just east, I mean, it's, it's 100 or so, and I, I can't see another building 50% higher than that. The Hilton or the Hyatt? Which hotel I'm trying uh, to? The one where Ruth Chris is. I forgot the name of the hotel. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hey, John, can you yeah. go ahead a couple of slides? I want to ask you a question about a slide that we're not on. One more. That slide. Okay. It, it, oh, back. Am I understanding this previous slide, if you go back to where you just were, to show all of the area that's currently purple in that slide has unlimited height currently? Correct. Okay. So it's currently, anything that's purple on this map has an unlimited height. Anything that's green has a height of 75 feet. And the area that I'm going to call teal which is that area behind the subject parcel that we're talking about, that currently also is 75, correct? So I think this is currently a telling 75. slide here, because if you can go right across the railroad tracks and basically build unlimited, this is actually, in some respects, if we were to go to an Innovista design district, is a little bit more restrictive. This Am I is, reading that? This is, uh, it is, more restrictive than the purple, correct. It is a little bit more um, aggressive than the other side. More, uh, it allows for a little bit more um, than it currently does. I've got some real concerns about, particularly the unlimited height in in this whole. Well, this unlimited height area. has been on the books for not cl close to a decade. Well, I've still it's got concerns about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had concerns about it. Is there anyone that wants to speak on this tonight, or is this? I don't know. I, I'll just follow up a little bit on the, to, to try to address the concerns of the unlimited height. Um, what we have found with, from a zoning perspective of unlimited height, is it is, in essence, is self-regulating. So for instance, um, Main Street, a lot of the areas along Assembly Street, those are also unlimited. They've been unlimited for decades. Um, and Did you say along Main Street? Main Street, Main Assembly Street, in the downtown core. That's, that's not the Vista, though. That's Main Street. Correct. And this area is Inna Vista, and Inna Vista's had a, a unlimited height for, for quite a while here. And what we have um, found is that it is, in essence, a little bit of a self-regulatory thing because as they have to provide parking and they have to provide other things, there is a balance in terms of economics of how tall you can go. So. Um, we have seen some proposals come in that are, are fairly tall, um, but they usually seem to go a little bit shorter. So um, right now, you know, we kind of see 
um, buildings that are, you know, um, trying to think of the one apartment building that's being built, but it's probably, I think it's about seven stories or something like that. So um, we haven't seen a tremendous um, hype in a lot of our unlimited areas because they have to balance a parking garage and, you know, all the spaces in that with the height and all of that type of um, economics. So it's that one small section Any further questions for staff? I'd like to call for a motion then, please. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, the motion is to recommend approval to rezone a portion of 1100 Wayne Street from mixed use urban district design development area and a Vista design district and design preservation to mixed use urban district and a Vista design district and design and preservation area. Two, to amend and a Vista design district guidelines to reflect proposed changes to the boundaries and height requirements in the buffer areas. Three, amend the City of Columbia's official zoning map to extend the boundaries of the ID zoning district and remove the DD zoning district from the same area. Four, amend City of Columbia's Code of Ordinances, 17-291 and 17-325 to reflect proposed changes to the Innovista Design District guidelines and the official zoning map. That's a long one. Do we have a second? Second. second. Is there any further discussion or questions for staff? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. The motion is approved. Is there any other business? The only other business is, is uh, we do have a work session coming up later in the month. We did send a uh, meeting invite to you, so if you haven't seen it, if you were out of town last week or something like that, just check it out. Um, but we'll be continuing our discussion about the uh, land development and zoning ordinance. Um, Have we set a date there. yet for that? that? Have we set the date yet? We did. Is I it believe 16th? it's a Thursday at lunchtime. We'll have sandwiches, uh, 12 to 1.30ish. That was, this, was it the 16th? No, no, no. Or the 20th? Thursday, I think. I think it's next. Thursday, which is the 19th? 19th. No. Yes, next Thursday, the 19th. Okay. Yep. Um, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn, please. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>